What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Sideline, week seven of the NFL season. Before we get going, remember, like, subscribe, and leave a comment. All right, today's first segment, I'm going to give you my three biggest takeaways from this week of NFL's games. My biggest takeaway, the Bucs feel different in a bad way this season because, you know, Tom Brady teams sometimes get off to a slow start. You know, two and two, you know, three and two, you know, whatever. Not not terrible, but not, not the standard for Tom Brady teams. And usually those teams end up rebounding and making it to the Super Bowl or making deep playoff runs. But we're almost at the halfway point. We're looking at week eight, and the Bucs have a losing record. And usually by this time, Brady teams are starting to figure it out, and it's going the other way for this team. They're going in reverse order. They're getting worse every week. And they didn't score a touchdown against Carolina. Carolina is maybe the worst team in the NFL. They have P.J. Walker at quarterback, and they got blown out. They got manhandled by Carolina. Frankly, it wasn't even close. Carolina wasn't controlled the whole game. Brady looks frustrated. All the players' body language is really bad. Nothing is going right. The offense looks fucking awful. I will not write off. I will not write off a Tom Brady team. I just won't do it. I've seen too much from him, and I know too much about how he is as a competitor to do that. But this team feels different in a bad way, and I would not pick them to win the Super Bowl. Aaron Rodgers seems really uninterested this season. The Packers, kind of the same thing. The Bucs, they have a Hall of Fame quarterback. They're three and four. They're reeling. And he just doesn't seem like he cares. He got a big extension this offseason. He's making a shit ton of money. He knew if he did that, Devontae Adams was going to leave, which happened because he can't pay both of them. And they didn't really replace him. They got worse. They lost a couple guys on defense. They thought the defense was going to be a strength of the team. The defense is bad. The special teams is maybe the worst in the NFL. And Rogers seems disinterested, partly because he doesn't have anyone to throw him the ball. But part of it's that fault is his fault, too, because you have to work with those guys. You getting paid that much money, part of your job is to pick up the guys around you. And he's just not doing it. It doesn't seem like he cares really that much. It doesn't seem like football is his first priority, and it's showing up on the field. My third takeaway, Mahomes is on a mission this year. No one was talking about him in the offseason. Everyone's talking about the Raiders, the Broncos, the Chargers. Everyone in his division but him. Well, the Broncos suck, the Raiders suck, and the Chargers are 4-3, and three, but they do not look good either. They just got washed by Seattle. Mahomes looks fucking unbelievable. He looks like M- MVP Mahomes again. He's right there with Josh Allen as the best quarterback in the league. They lost Tyreek Hill, but it doesn't matter. They got Valdez Scanlon. They got Juju. They got Miko Hardman, Sky Moore. They got some guys, and Mahomes looks awesome. I would be scared to play Kansas City come playoff time. All right, next we're going to get into the top five games of week seven of the NFL season. And for this segment, I have a very special guest today from Coastal Carolina, Sam Reed. How's it going? Sam, you look great. Oh, thank you, man. Sam, it's always a pleasure. You brighten everyone's day when you come in the studio. You're just just that. You have that type of presence. Thanks for having me, Matt. Appreciate it. All right. Enough with the pleasantries. All right, let's get into the first game. Commanders, Packers. Sam, I don't think anyone picked the Commanders in this game. Because they're fucking terrible. Taylor Heineke led them to a win over Green Bay. Sam, the Packers might miss the playoffs. What do you think? I mean, Green Bay, from what we've seen so far, it's about halfway through the season. They don't look great. I mean, nothing's really clicking on any side of the ball. I mean, defensively, they're giving up a lot of touchdowns to a lot of offenses that are very mediocre. Mm. Like, look at the Patriots. Bailey Zappi, when he played them, he looked very good. A guy named Bailey. Taylor Heineke, the guy that wasn't even set on playing Mm. up until Carson Wentz was ruled out because Mm. of his injury, he was literally going to be golfing this weekend, set to miss the game. He had to relearn the playbook all this week and somehow led his team to defeat this Packers team. It's not a good look for their franchise. Sam, I agree. I think they're fucked. I I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. The Vikings are 5-1. and I mean, they'll eventually choke with Kirk Cousins, but they can still win the division. And I don't know, it just seems, Rodgers doesn't seem like he really cares as much. He's going to say, oh, whatever, I'll make my bag. We win, we win, we lose, we lose. You can't lose games to the commanders, Sam. I also feel that the wide receiver core of Lazar and uh, Romeo, Romeo Dobbs, Dobbs, like that's not really people no. that should be your one and two. No. I mean, you need at least a guy like a Stephon Diggs, Devontae Adams, Justin Jefferson to be mm. the guy. Yeah. Because they're 
consistent, reliable, safety blanket, whatever you want to call that. Mm. But when you have a guy that is a borderline wide receiver three or four Mm. on a team being your number one, things aren't going to look good. It's no good. And what we've seen so far, three and four record, that goes to show you. Sam, I agree. I think that's a great point. All right. Game number two, the New York football Giants and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Sam, the Giants are six and one. It looks like Brian Dayball has all the answers, Sam. Are you buying in on the New York football Giants? I really don't know at this okay. point. All right. I mean, it seems like they have gotten a little bit of luck on their side. Okay. Couple a lot of, of close these games. games. A lot yeah, of close games, A lot games, of close Sam. games, like especially last week as well with Baltimore. Yeah. Uh, it just seems like a lot of stuff has gone their favor down mm. the stretch in these games. Like, for instance, uh, they were barely able to hold off the Jags because Christian Kirk couldn't find his way into the end zone. The one yard the line. Game. That was crazy. That was a little bit crazy, but yeah. still, they were down to start this game. What were they down? Like 13 8 yeah, or they were something losing. like that? Yeah, they were losing. Uh, so I thought their comeback was very uh, brave of them. Mm. But just to say that the Giants are like a powerhouse. I'm not really buying it okay. just because their defense is kind of so-so. So-so, and then also Daniel Jones as the starting QB. You're not a believer in Daniel Jones. I'm not a believer. I mean, I think he's a fraud. I oh, mean, wow. We'll see him down the stretch, especially when he starts playing those divisional games against the Redskins. Yeah. Well, Commanders, Eagles, and the Cowgirls. I will say Daniel Jones, he's been playing well, um, but I agree he's, he's not the guy. I mean, he kind of looks like a frat kid. Who like maybe gets like a sexual like you know assault like allegation against him, but like his dad knows the judge, so he gets off. Like he, you know, oh, yeah. that's the type of vibe I get from him. Um, as for the Giants, I I agree. I'm not buying them as like a true contender, and I thought they were frauds for a uh, long time. But six and one is six and one, and they're winning close games, they're winning them ugly. But listen, I mean, you, a win's a win, and uh, eventually I gotta just say the record is the record, and I'll give it to them right now. I mean, they're they're rolling. I think Dayball's been doing a really good job of getting the most out of the players he has. And I think if they do get, like, an actual quarterback with Dayball, Saquon, some of the weapons they got, they could, you know, a couple years, they could be, you know, they could be something. Well, are you buying into their wide receiver core? Because I feel like all the targets, like the wide receiver core, like uh, that guy, Wandale Robinson, Robinson, Richie James, Darius Toney. Are you really buying into that core? They're okay. They got some guys. I feel like it's very in and out, like Sterling Shepard. They're always hurt. Um, I feel like they have a lot of, like, twos and threes. Who are, so I feel like they could use, like, a guy, you know, and they thought it was going to be Kenny Galladay, and he just hasn't worked out. Yeah. They could use, a, you know. Well, you God. know a stat that really just blows Big hands. my mind what? is, you know that tackle that they drafted a couple years ago, sure. Andrew Thomas? Yeah. He has more touchdowns mm. than Kendarius Tony and Kenny Galladay. That's not good. He has two yeah. touchdowns. They need a guy with some nice big hands, you know, to <laughs> some of those passes. You know what I'm saying, Sam? So you get pretty, you could play for them. Oh, come on. All right. Next game Chiefs Niners. Sam, I know because, you know, when we were watching House of the Dragon yesterday, you told me I want to talk about this game. So I'm excited to hear your thoughts. Quickly, uh, it was a close game for a little while. Uh, C Mac made his 49er debut. He looked pretty good in the limited time they used him. And, uh, but, you know, the game eventually got away from the Niners. Jimmy G made some mistakes, and Mahomes ended up carving up San Francisco. Sam, what do you think? I got to say, I'm not really a fan of what I've seen out of Jimmy G. Uh-huh. He's Fellow let Paisan, me down the past uh-huh. couple weeks, okay. especially against the Falcons. That was a very abysmal performance. That was awful. They were favored by what, like at least a touchdown or something? Yeah, like they were that. heavy favorites. And they lost by at least two touchdowns. They did not show up. They didn't show up. And then yeah. in this game, too, it was supposed to be like a pick em game, like, you know, minus one, plus one. Yeah. And they get blown out. Yeah. Like, it wasn't even close. That second half, KC Mahomes just ran mm-hmm. away with it. A couple big plays on third down. It was third and 20. Jarek McKinnon, little screen pass, almost runs into the end zone himself. Mm. Yeah, and that was bad. Third and 11, uh, the bomb to Valdez Scantling over the middle. I mean, who's stopping this Kansas City Chiefs offense? Sam, are they your favorite Kansas City to win the Super Bowl? I would say, as of right now, KC is the favorite. Wow. Just because Look at that. Sam. on both sides of the ball, they are unstoppable. Over Buffalo? Over Buffalo. Okay, all right. You heard it here first. Both sides of the ball, they're unstoppable. They got guys up front like Chris Jones, mm. who is just... He's a big dude. He's eating up opposing offensive lines. He is just getting his way, body. getting to the quarterback forcing pressure on the QB, making those hurried throws, mm. 
forcing those fumbles, and it's just unbelievable. Like, you see that difference in the score. That's a three-touchdown difference right yeah. there. I mean, it's unbelievable. Sam, I agree. Uh, I think the Niners are... F- oh, no, I think the Chiefs are for real. As for the Niners, I mean, Jimmy G, he just makes... I like Jimmy G because he's Italian, but he le- he makes too many mistakes, too many costly interceptions. You know what I mean? He just does... It's It's like a girl. She looks great, you know? She, you know, at the very beginning, it's all nice. You got that kind of honeymoon phase. But then, like, she just makes mistake after. And, you know, at first you try, oh, she's hot. I'll let it go. But then, you know, oh, you know, she's clingy. Just too, too many things that it just enough's enough. You know, at some point, you're just going to be like, all right, like, she looks nice. But, you know, and I, I think he can only get them so far. I think the Niners are a good team. They have a good defense, even though they got carved up. They got weapons, but. I don't know if they can win a Super Bowl. With it. I, they can. I know they can make a deep run, but I don't know if he can win the big game. It's going to come down to him. That's all I'm yeah. going to say because their old line did not produce yeah. at all yesterday. He was getting just pressured day after day after yeah. day by that team. It was unbelievable. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens. All right. Next, we got Carolina versus Tampa Bay. Sam, we had as many touchdowns as the Buccaneers did yesterday. Uh, this is maybe the worst Brady offense I've watched in a long time. I mean, I'm getting shades of, like, 2013 when he had, like, Kembro Tompkins, Aaron Dobson, you know, fucking Josh Boyce. Even, I mean, they fucking scored more than this guys. And they have, he's Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. I mean, I don't know, Sam. Like, what, what's going on in Tampa Bay? What's in the water down there? I feel like the team's just not buying in to his okay. culture. Oh, wow. I mean, Brady expects a lot out of his players. You it's can true. tell on the sidelines he's going at his O line, being like, "Hey, mm. you guys really need to step it up." But really, it's a little bit on his end too. I agree, some, Sam. Some of those throws that he's making, he's trying to fit in balls into like three defenders. I mean, they're not doable. Well, Sam, he's yelling at the offensive line. I mean, meanwhile, he's missing meetings to go to Robert Kraft's wedding. You know, he's missing practices, you know, because he's getting a, a divorce with his wife. If I was Tom, I think the biggest takeaway is Tom should have, you know, stayed retired. I mean, listen, it cost him, you know, Giselle, it looks like, and they're losing, you know. I mean, imagine he gets divorced and, I mean, they have a bad year. I mean, listen, not good, Sam. He not def- good. He definitely should have went out on top. I'm saying once he won the Super Bowl, he should have retired. It would have been a great ending. But instead, he got greedy. I mean, maybe Giselle knew. She's like, you know, you know, guys, you don't have the guys this year, Tom. Just, you know, stay with me. It's kind of like Danny Vass in the casino. You know what I mean? You get yeah. greedy. You lose all your money. This is true. That is a that's a good. It's like a gambler who thinks he can. He is the magic touch. He can keep winning and winning, but eventually you lose. In the you end, can't the win house every time. always wins. The house right? always wins. Sam always wins. <laughs> no, but we'll have to see what happens with. I think you know. I th- they'll make the playoffs. I th- still think they'll make a run, but I, you can't pick them to win the Super Bowl right now. It's just how they looked. They look terrible. The film doesn't lie, Sam. Exactly. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Next game. Jets Broncos. We all know you're a huge Jets fan, Sam. You know, you and Fireman. At, no, I'm kidding. Um, No, but the Jets are actually, like, not terrible. I mean, they're probably one of the worst franchises in the history of sports. They're 5-2. and two. Salah has the defense clicking. And my biggest takeaway from this, well, obviously the Broncos are cooked. I mean, they're, they're fucked. But other than that... um. It just looked like they're having fun. Like the guys, you know, doing all these handshakes, like Sauce Gardner. Like they got some energy. They got some funk. I know Brees Hall just tore his AC out. That's going to hurt. But are you buying in on the New York football Jets? The New York football Jets. From what I've seen so far, I think this is their fourth consecutive win in I a row. I think so. Uh, they look good. Mm. Um, it's sad to hear about Brees Hall going down. Yeah, Shout bad. out to RJ Carreri for picking them in fantasy. You know, good pick up until this week. But who can see this coming? Uh, I would say after Brees Hall went down, the offense did look a little stagnant out there. Okay. They weren't able to move the ball as freely just because the run game opens up the passing mm, game. That's great. Yeah. And since they didn't have that running game, it definitely led to them only scoring 16 points against this weak Broncos team. Mm-hmm. But I feel like they got a couple of really big games coming up in their schedules so we'll see if this team is real okay after the next couple weeks and as far as the broncos go yeah what do you think they are the laughing stock of the league they're pretty bad they are worse than the detroit lions they're the, yeah they're i think the broncos are the most because the expectations were so high and i mean they put a, their offense maybe they it's disappointing too because they actually have a legit their defense is legit dude 
Mm-hmm. Like, they don't give up points. And fucking, their offense may be the worst in the league. They and they got, get dudes. They get Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton. Well, like you said, their defense is legit. Pat Sertan is yeah, being good, called man. the best cornerback in the league. I mean, he's locked down. He's definitely up there. He is shutting down the opposing team's number one wide receiver on a game-to-game basis. But, I mean, if you can't put up points, you're not going to win games. And from what we've seen so far, nine points is not going to win you a football game. Probably not. So if this keeps up, I mean, they're going to get the number one overall pick. This is true. All right. Well, that's all the games we have. Sam, thank you so much for coming on. It's really a pleasure. Thanks Th- for having me again, Matt. Everyone was asking me, when's Sam coming back? We need Sam on the show. Please. Can you? I said, he's a busy man. We'll try and get him back. You know. So it's thank you for making the time. I do my best. All right? All right. Next segment, fantasy segment. We're bringing back everyone's favorite segment, Sweet and Sour. I'm giving you my sweetest and most sour players from fantasy this week. Who I like, who I don't like. Let's get into it. All right. My first sweet, Jamar Chase. Now, I know what everyone's going to... This is an obvious one, Matt. We all know Jamar Chase is fucking awesome. But he had a little s- s- slow start to the season. You know, not terrible, but he was, you know, it took him a little while. We, it was 10, 12 points a week, wasn't getting a ton of touchdowns. The past two or three weeks, he had two straight 30-point weeks. The Bengals are now figuring it out. They've rattled off four in a row. Joe Burrow's slinging it all over the field, and Chase is fucking going off again. They got Tyler Boyd going off. T. Higgins, it seems like the Bengals have really found their groove, and Jamar Chase is uh, benefiting from that more than anyone. Jamar Chase is finally at wide receiver one. Everyone drafted this year. My number one sour is Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. Now, I know what you're going to say. He had a touchdown yesterday, Matt. Why is he on your sour? Well, he had a touchdown, and he still had under 10 fantasy points, and he got benched yesterday for the rookie they drafted. I'm out on Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. He had a good start to the season, but the last three weeks, he's regressed. Kansas City throws it in the red zone a ton, and it seems like he may not even be the primary back anymore. They featured a rookie kid. They featured Jarek McKinnon. I don't think you can start Clyde edwards and feel confident about it. He may have a big week here and there where he gets lucky, gets a couple of touchdowns like Nicole Harbin did, but to rely on him consistently, you, you can't do it. Clyde edwards Hilaire, sour. All right, my number two sweet this week is Josh Jacobs. Now, this is a guy a lot of people thought might get traded, might get cut in the They were having him play in preseason like he's a fucking rookie. And so I think a lot of people kind of stayed away from him early on in drafts. Because it was, it was a lot of uncertainty in the Raiders' backfield. You know, they had Brendan Bolden, Zaire White. Is he going to split carries? Well, he has taken off with their starting job. I think he took it as an insult. I mean, this is a guy, Alabama, first-round pick. You know, they traded up to get him. And he had thirty over 35 fantasy points this week. He's gone off the past couple of weeks. He's clearly a guy. He's running hard. He's getting all the carries. He gets all the goal line work. And the Raiders' offense is pretty good. Enough for him, you know, to get you know, a decent amount of touchdowns. If you drafted Josh Jacobs, you probably took him as a flex option, maybe even a backup, depending how big your league size is. Well, now you're playing him every week. He could be considered an RB1. If he's your flex play, you're fucking golden. Josh Jacobs, a must start every week from here on out. My number two sour is James Robinson. Now, my friend RJ, not a smart kid when it comes to fantasy. He traded for James Robinson. Fucking it. He's fool's gold. He had a couple good weeks at the beginning of the season, and people were buying in. Oh, was he the guy over ETN? No. Things have completely regressed. ETN has risen. He's had two really good weeks. He had a touchdown last week. Robinson had zero points this week. He wasn't even targeted. And normally, he's the goal line back, so he can at least salvage a touchdown. Not this week. They gave it to ETN. The Jaguars are regressing. James Robinson's touches are regressing. They, I mean, they drafted ETN in the first round, so you knew they were going to give him every chance. And it seems like Robinson has taken a back seat. He's not completely useless. I would stash him if you have ETN because if ETN does get hurt, Robinson would uh, be fantasy relevant again. But you cannot play James Robinson until or if that happens going forward. My third takeaway, my f- f- third sweet, Austin Eckler is tearing it up for the L.A. Chargers. I mean, this man has put up three straight 30-point games. He had two touchdowns again uh, in yesterday's game. And a lot of people wondering, because he had a little slow start to the season, first two or three weeks, he didn't have a touchdown. Then he exploded. He looks like an RB1. I mean, if you were doing a redraft right now in fantasy football, 
starting today. He might be the first overall pick. He's tearing it up. He gets a ton of fucking targets. He gets a ton of catches. He's getting goal line work now. And the Chargers are starting slow in games. So he's getting plenty of work, receiving, rushing. Austin Eckler is that dude everyone drafted top three in the drafts this year. Number three, Sauer, A.J. Dillon. Now, this is very disappointing because I like A.J. Dillon. He's got legs like fucking tree trunks. But the Packers aren't as good as they were last year, and it's showing up in, you know, in A.J. Dillon's production. I mean, I don't think he's had a double-digit fantasy week since week one, and even then, I think it was only 11 points. Aaron Jones is getting all the work, and you would say everyone drafted A.J. Dillon because they thought they would split carries and Dillon would get out of goal line work. Well, they don't even get to the goal line, and when they do, Jones has been getting a lot of looks there. They've been behind in games, passing a lot more. I'd, I'd say it's safe to release him. I mean, if you have to, I wouldn't if you don't have to, but if you if you need a guy to release, I mean, I, w- I wouldn't feel too bad about releasing A.J. Dillon. Um, I, I would keep him if you have Aaron Jones, kind of stash him, but there's no way you could play A.J. Dillon. He's not catching passes. The Packers aren't scoring a lot. A.J. Dillon has been a major disappointment for people who drafted him early, thinking he was going to break out this season. And that's all I got for Sweet and Sour. That's going to wrap up the program today. Uh, Thank you, everyone, for watching. I really appreciate it. Before we leave, remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, tell me what you thought of this week's NFL games. And remember, Woco Media, we have the Movie Mob, premieres Fridays at 8 o'clock every Friday. It's me, it's RJ, it's Sam, it's Nick. It's a great time. We'll see you next week. All right.